You know, as a student of history, um, a, a screen like this that presents you with a list of potential uh, tribes that you can be is, is very, very interesting to me um, because each of them has their own strength and weaknesses. These are the only civilizations yeah. ever on Earth, correct? Who have ever existed, yeah. Huh. Um, and, you know, a lot of people would have said that, you know, in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, you didn't have enough information to make that call. But uh, I think uh, Sid Meier uh, showed them all that they were wrong. Yeah, I, uh, I appreciate how in-depth he's gotten into yeah. uh, archaeology. Yeah. He, yeah, he got out there in the dirt and really figured this shit out. Um, they, they really uh, they boiled, boiled it down, you know, on, uh, on the European continent. It's pretty much just the French, the Russians, the Greeks, the Germans, and uh, the Romans. Yeah, that makes sense. Them. They were all there at the same time. Yeah, and uh, I, I had heard growing up that there was a country called Spain. Um, Lies. Lies and and, and yeah, it wasn't until years later that I uh, I realized that it was all made up because I played Civilization and I didn't see it on the list. Hmm. Uh, so we're going to be uh, the English because mm -hmm. we speak English. Do we? Who should the ruler of the English be? Bob. Jimothy Rando. I've never heard of him before. Jimothy Rando, you have risen to become leader of the English. May your reign be long and prosperous. The English have knowledge of irrigation, mining, bronze working, and roads. That's a, an interesting collection of skills, but I mean, that is really the bedrock of... I uh, thought they started with tea. Well, I mean, that comes later. It's one of their civilization specialties. All right. So you start the game as a little uh, settler, and uh, it's a settler from the 1850s for some reason, even though this is uh, 4000 mm -hmm. B.C., and your first task is to find a suitable location to found a city. Now, this is the deceptive bit because you could spend days wandering around like I'm doing right now with your uh, people, you know, crossing the desert, uh, you know, like the Israelites. But the reality is that you should just found a town right away because the six other civilizations in the game right now, they usually just start their city on the first turn. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm at a marked disadvantage here. All right. So when, when do the ancient aliens come on board? So that happens at about uh, 1250 BC, or sorry, AD onward. Okay. And um, it's a special event that you have to mod into the game specifically. Okay. We're going to go back to where we started. So essentially, it's now the year uh, 3780 BC. So we spent 220 years wandering about six blocks only to come back to where we originally started. So you're and, a hunter-gatherer uh, society. That's right. But now, as of 3780 BC... We are going to be uh, uh, more of an agricultural civilization. So what should our city be named? Uh, it was called London because we're the English, but we're kind of co-opting that. So we're going to call it... Uh, Beamdogia. Beamdogia. Oh. It's, it's a soft G. Uh, I see. The, it's very meme -ish. And here you can see us founding our city in the middle of a vast empty field. And uh, we set up uh, seven huts and a road. The road feels unnecessary, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I don't care. Well, look, they're so all about setting up infrastructure. This is our city. Uh, the first thing that we can build is a militia or settlers or a phalanx because we know uh, how to do uh, copper, I think. Um, and there's a, a barracks we can build. That mm -hmm. means that all the units that we build will be veterans when they come out. Or we could spend 100 turns building the Colossus of Rhodes. That is ideal for any civilization. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's an important step for Beam Dogia to construct a massive statue as a monument to man's contempt for the sky. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's change that because that's insane. <laughs> Let's build a militia so that, you know, some random barbarians can't kill us and then we'll uh, end our turn. So, uh, Lee, is there a reason that we're streaming today? I noticed that Trent's not here. Where is well, he? Well, it's, it's Friday. And it's we Friday. Stream, and, and that's kind of what we, we do. Stream. And I'm in here in the power seat, in mm -hmm. Trent's seat, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. you will all see in a moment, so uh, because he's off on vacation. Knowing that we stream every Friday, how could Trent have possibly left? It's Does it, it's just that he has contempt for our viewers. I think uh, that's the I, only possible I was going to say it was a mystery, and he's off on some important adventure sure, uh, let's advancing say that. the cause. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's say that. So... So uh, 80 years have passed, and uh, our militia is still not yet complete. I feel um, like 80 years of this stream has passed. <laughs> Lol. Classic. All right, so 100 years passes, and our first militia is completed. 
Uh, and now they're really, really excited. If you train for a hundred years before you're you're able to get into uh, your your chosen profession, you're obviously going to be very motivated to get started, make a difference. It's just like game dev. It just takes like a hundred years to make anything so happen. So we've got a little army of highly motivated dudes who've been chomping at the bit for a hundred a century of training, and uh, we're going to put him on guard duty. Can we name him? Uh, no, you can't. Oh shit! I was going to name him two point five. Well, he's not coming. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's got to stay in the base, and uh, he's going to live there until the next militia gets built. This has got to be a real kick in the teeth for them. They wait another century after their initial training for another militia group to get built, and that militia group gets to leave the city. Sorry, I like guys. that these people are immortal. Well, I mean, I'm assuming that they, you know they're. Oh, we just discovered the alphabet. S from from zero to the Latin alphabet. Mm -hmm. That's how quick we jump. And apparently we've already figured out spheres and uh, pyramids and scrolls. I mean, I'm I'm impressed that we were able to build these fancy marble columns without and the fashion alphabet. too. I mean, like them digs. Yeah, look at this guy. He's like first the alphabet, then math. An alphabet is a group of symbols that represents phonemes, sounds that humans can make or distinguish. Some alphabets represent syllables. The ancestors of modern alphabets are the iconographic and ideographic symbols of ancient man, such as the cuneiform and hieroglyphics. The modern alphabet of the West traces back to the Romans, then to the Greeks, and then to the Phoenicians. The alphabet was a significant was significant because ideas can... I'm going to stop. I'm being an asshole. <laughs> All right. So because we've discovered the alphabet, we can now create a code of laws. We can make maps. We can make mathematics mm -hmm. uh, once we've discovered masonry, of course. Right. Um, and now we can write. So believe it or not, it uh, nobody could write anything until the alphabet came along. One, one day, some guy was like, hey, you know what? What if we made up 24 characters and each one represented a sound? And when you put them together, then we can start capturing the things that we're saying into text. Which one of these leads to narrative design? Uh, you're going to need writing and you're going to need ceremonial burial. So let's uh, get that one next. Yeah, that's, that's a clear path. Yeah. Um, so our, our, our second militia is uh, out and about here, but we're going to change up the... God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, it's, uh, it's telling me all about the local terrain. We're going to build some settlers because... Uh, we need another city, I think. So, Lee, is there any uh, beam dog news we should be talking about, or are people Absol happy to listen to this bullshit? For uh, <laughs> there's absolutely no beam dog news except for what I have down here. So, some of you, if you're uh, if you turn it, tune into the stream fairly frequently, have heard some of this before, but I'm going to tell you it again anyway. So, if you're local to Edmonton, show up to Edmonton Expo because myself, Lee, and uh, a bunch of other Beamdoggers will be there at the Edmonton Expo booth. Uh, we'll be doing some contests and giveaways. Uh, we'll be selling Steam keys and maybe some other fun stuff. Maybe. Probably not. Oh, I'll, well, I'll be honest. Yeah. We're uh, probably just going to sit around and do nothing. Okay, so you can show up and watch us do what we do best. Hey, you could watch us play Magic the Gathering. We had a, uh, a Magic the Gathering tournament here at the office this last week. And I'm not kidding, by the way. This is a real legitimate thing that happened. We did like the er nerd thing and we had a Magic the Gathering tournament. And the grand prize was, of course, a uh, week's supply of Lunchables. For those of you who are outside of North America, a Lunchable is a small child's lunch that comes uh, prepackaged. It comes with meat, Crackers. cheese, Crackers, yes. And, and all of those things should be in quotations. Well, you know, it's it's they spray it with water beforehand so that it's preserved. And Not there's also a Twix. You get a little treat as well. Um, so the winner of the Magic the Gathering tournament got a big old stack of those mm -hmm. um, to dine on as they see fit. So thank you to Wizards of the Coast for sending us a massive stack of Magic cards. It's just another fun perk of mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. at Beamdog. And, and if you're wondering why the 2.5 patch is not uh, completed yet, it's because uh, this Magic the Gathering uh, tournament that we had. Right, and that brings me to my first post-it. Lies. Right, there we go. Yeah. Uh, is so two five done? Is it is it out? No, we'll get we're to two five there. in a minute. We All have right. a list. Right. We have an agenda. Well, sir. while you're reading, let's uh, let's get the screen back on Civ, and I'll show people my negotiations with Genghis Khan, ruler and emperor of the Mongols. All right, and if you can't read the post-it, it says lies, and I have a nice big stack of them. Hashtag don't believe his lies. It looks kind of like it says lice. 
<laughs> and that can't be true because I mean, come on. You get those later. All right. We uh, we infused your little jackety thing there. Sorry, I'm just talking to Genghis Khan and he's trying to sell me some ceremonial burial. But uh, I'm like, buddy, I don't need to know about your kind of ceremonial burial. Dude, that's that's kind of harsh. It is, but All you right. got to drive a hard bargain here. So next up on my very important agenda, Phil. Please continue. Is uh, sign up for our newsletter. You can do so at beamdog.com. Uh, we will be running some newsletters soon. Um, we are just in the process of getting everything together there, and we'll be running some fun contests there. In the past, we've uh, done that contest where uh, you enter to win, and maybe a portrait gets made of you. That's been popular in the past, so maybe we should do that again. Perhaps. Yep. Perhaps. I actually want to run a bunch of contests. We talked about some module contests in the past, and we're uh, kind of in the middle of organizing that right now. Um, yeah, I want to see community stuff, and I want to see it on the stream, and I want to talk about it, and mm -hmm. I want to be like, hey, you know what? This guy added a cool dungeon where you can stab me in the forehead. I think that's neat. That was my favorite dungeon. Yeah. And the one thing that I really like about the, uh, the contests where we create portraits and whatnot is that we're not only immortalizing a fan in one of um, in a fantasy portrait, but we're also adding those portraits to Neverwinter Nights and the Infinity Engine titles, minus Planescape, because we don't touch Planescape. Um, let's see, what else do I got here? All right, so uh, if you're not following our Steam developer page, you should, because Steam wants us to promote that sort of thing. Yes. And it's a convenient place to see all of the games that we offer so that you can obsessively check it every day so that if we release a new game, you're like, oh, I have to complete the set. Or a new portrait pack or a new something or, or a another. Or portrait pack. We've got to put a positive spin on things. Like <laughs> I'm the positive one in okay, this. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, while Trent's gone, I have to be both the straight and the uh, not straight man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, and uh, going back to perks at the company, we are hiring so if you are a programmer, if you are a technical artist, if you are a web developer, was it? Yeah, we could use another web developer. Yeah. Yeah, I could, I could, yeah, if you got skills, get in touch with us because we need you. And uh, some news that was just announced within the company is that uh, we're no longer going to be stacked up oh, like right. cordwood I anymore. I guess we can finally announce this for real. We can't say where. Yeah, sure we can. Oh. Trent's not here. He's not going to stop me. <laughs> uh, well, hey, man, the lease where. is signed. I don't, you want to go on vacation? You put me on stream? Bad things are going to happen. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's step away from civilization for a brief moment. All right. Are and, you going to uh, pin us on Google Maps? Well, it's... it's uh, I'm not going to pin. So can All I right. open a new uh, a new window here? All right, so here we go. We are still in Canada. We're still in Canada. We're still um, in Edmonton. But it's, it's a pretty big move. Um, this is this is not a minor adjustment for us. Uh, it's it's tough to go this far. Yeah. So I'm just going to bring up a satellite view of uh, Edmonton here. So uh, as Google provides a live feed, this is a live satellite mm -hmm. feed. Uh, you can see people walking around that sort of thing. Hey Phil, enhance. 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 Bring up sector 274 and freeze and frame 172. Uh, Edmonton is lucky because uh, we uh, have 3D maps data for all of Google Maps. And uh, if we switch to my screen here, we can take a gander at it. We're going to give you guys a little virtual tour of our neighborhood here. Mm -hmm. And uh, please don't come to our office and stalk us because that would be very upsetting. And... Um, if you're that kind of person, if you're the kind of person who stalks, um, maybe just don't watch this segment. Mm -hmm. All right, so here is uh, beautiful Edmonton, which is located in the heart of uh, Alberta. Alberta is located in the heart of Canada, and uh, it's on the east side of the Rocky Mountains, which you can see here. There's Vancouver, there's Vancouver mm -hmm. Island, there's Washington. Which is the coast? They're down yep. here somewhere. Where's uh, Where's Renton? Somewhere, and uh, it's, uh, there's Renton. All right, do you think I can blind find the uh, the Wizards of the Coast office? <laughs> I've never been, so let's let's. Okay, it's 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 near Boeing. I think it. Uh, I think it's somewhere around here. Is it? No, I'm I'm lost. All right. Anyways, Wizards of the Coast is in Renton, Washington. We are not. We're all the way over here. <laughs> and uh, we're going to zoom in a bit here. So this is Edmonton. And we're in the uh, the old Strathcona neighborhood. So uh, this is the very trendy White Avenue here. And it's where everybody um, comes to uh, get drunk on Friday nights. Mm -hmm. And you hardly ever get stabbed. It's it's true. Um, when, uh, when there's a big old hockey game happening, people like to riot here. Uh, and it's just a lot of fun, you know, you get drunk, you get into a fight, uh, maybe you'll get mugged, 
it's it's a fantastic neighborhood, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, our office is uh, currently in this zone around here, mm -hmm. and we're moving all the way down the road to uh, this little building here. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you uh, eagle-eyed observers might notice that this is, um, well, let's zoom down to street view here. We're, we're big fans of books. Yeah. So uh, I can't I can't zoom in because I'm too yeah. stupid to use Google Maps. We're uh, right. you're adding. Hey, uh, what's that? Not anymore. Third floor office space for lease. Maybe we should move in there. This building has a bit of a storied history, though. Um, outside of the fact that it's above a chapters, this uh, office space used to be where Bioware was. So many, once again, many years we're following ago. in Bioware's footsteps. This wasn't intentional. It just <laughs> happened. But uh, yeah, we're moving into the uh, old Bioware offices, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and excitement. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's happening in the near future. Mm -hmm. So that was the torturously long explanation of where we're going to be moving. Yeah. And it's actually funny. Like it's a tiny move. It's like two blocks, and uh, it should be a good time. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go back to Civ while Lee talks about uh, you know stuff. Yeah. So while sales. you were while you were talking, just to catch talk. people up, sorry, <laughs> um, I sent a militia to attack uh, the Mongols, and then that militia died, and now we're in uh, we're in hot water. So please continue, Lee. All right. Uh, sales wise, we don't have a whole lot going on this week, but if you are a Neverwinter fan who doesn't already own Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition, it is on sale on Steam for 20% off, as is uh, a bunch of the DLC. Not all of it, but but I believe uh, a bunch of the DLC is up for 25% off. So check that out. It's a great deal. And uh, just loads of content sitting there. So on to Beamdog News. Or Beam should we news. start answering some of these questions? That yeah, let's answer some questions. All right. So here's a short one for you, Phil. Uh, while at Source Stone, we may see the doors to into the other realms. What happened to them after the Source Stone was destroyed? Did they disappear? Is there any chance we may see these worlds, especially the ones, the one Ashira come from? Azera, the city Azala. of Azala. Az Saladar. Saladar. The Saladar. city of Saladar. Yeah. Do they have salad? Um, I don't have questions for those, or sorry, I don't have answers for those specific questions, but I could tell you that if you were inclined to, uh, you know, build a premium module that explored those questions, we're currently entertaining pitches for that sort of thing. Um, we've, you know, we've signed off on a couple things already, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm actually soliciting teams that uh, can produce to uh, send us premium module ideas. So yeah, I'd be very curious to see what your pitch for exploring those other doors would cool. be. You should, uh, you should ask, ask me that top one there. Is there anything, anything that you can tell us about the possibility of Neverwinter Nights 2 Enhanced Edition? And then in parenthesis they said, love Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. I already brought it. I have no idea. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested in doing Neverwinter 2. Obviously we have to finish all of our plans for Neverwinter 1. Um, but, you know, Hope springs eternal. Maybe we'll do something with it one day. Hope but right good. this second, we don't have any plans. All right. Can we get a schedule or a heads up for when Beamdog will be releasing an update? Yes. Uh, check the forums. Um, so basically, we, we kind of post our plans on the forums. We talk about on the stream here. We're not pushing out a development branch update this week, but we probably are pushing out an update next week. That's for Neverwinter Nights, yeah, which we'll Neverwinter talk Nights. a little bit more about down here. And they're probably talking about 2.5, which is, coincidentally, next up on my very important oh. agenda. So, let's talk 2.5. Let's talk 2.5. So where are we at? BG and SOD, they're not out yet. What the heck, Phil? What's going on? Um, they're pretty much done. We have two showstoppers right now. Um, there's one bug where okay this is a, this is a hard one because um, we're still trying to wrap our heads around why it's happening. So there's you know in BG how there's pre-generated characters yep. there's like Delia, Candorus, all those guys. Um, by the way, little aside here, Candorus from uh, Kotor mm -hmm. technically makes his first appearance in Baldur's Gate because he was somebody's uh, pre-gen. So Dungeons and Dragons and Star Wars. Same same brand. We're yep. owned by Disney now. Whoops. Yep. <laughs> this, it's happened in a snap. It's canon. It's, it's in a game. Um, anyway, so the pre-gens. So there's, there's like two pre-gens mm -hmm. where if you select Delia and I think, I um, can't remember her name, but it starts with an A, 
another pregen, the game will crash, but only those two pregens. And then there's another set of two pregens where if they're both in the game, it crashes. And we're having a real hard time figuring out why, because their character data isn't, you know, weird uh, compared to all the other characters. It seems like it's actually an engine problem that we're trying to track down. Mm -hmm. So there's that issue. And then there, I think there's one other multiplayer one. Um, yeah, there's a not a dupe bug, but a missing item bug in a rare case of a disconnect. So I want to fix up those two before we go out the door. Now, these are honestly like edge case issues. Um, you know, for 99% of players, this won't be a problem for them. For those players, 2.5 is effectively done. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm being a jerk and I'm holding off because I'd like this to be um, a good patch that we don't need to come back to. It, over it over makes again. sense because it takes us a while to get these yeah. patches out. So get a good one out and then we'll yeah. come back to it eventually. Um, now, the nice thing is... Uh, after 2.5, we're going to be able to push out language updates a lot more quickly. Mm -hmm. So as languages come online, we won't wait for a, a monolithic patch to get done before we push them out. Right. So we'll be a little quicker about that for our localization teams. Mm -hmm. And we can be because we've got Philip Fletchner working for us now. He's our localization coordinator. And he's, he's rad. He's awesome. And he's doing it full time, which is something that I used to do, but I just didn't have time to oversee Loke that well. So I'm very happy to have him there taking care of that stuff. You may have seen in previous streams, Phil wearing many hats. He a wears few. more than that. A few. All right, so that's 2.5 for Baldur's Gate and Siege of Dragonspear. But then after that, we've got Icewind Dale. Right. So we're doing, so Icewind Dale 2.5 is actually out right now, but we're gonna do on the tail end of the 2.5 series, a final update to Icewind because we found some additional localization issues we can clean up. Um, and this speaks directly to our ability to push out look updates. Mm -hmm. um, and I had promised a new feature for Icewind Dale that's in there now. And you know, it looks really, Trent's really cool. not here. That's true. He's not here. I could just reveal it, but I won't because no. he specifically said no to that one. But he didn't specifically say no to the chat. I'm trying. Thing. I'm trying to help you all here. All right. But <laughs> after that, we Trent's going to punch <laughs> his way through this wall, <laughs> speed back from whatever tropical island he's landed on. No, I and, and just beat the piss out of me. No, he's he's off to uh, somewhere in BC where there's no... Well, don't tell people where he is. He's at an undisclosed location. All right, but there's no cell phone or data, so it's he true. won't see this it's till true. like, Wednesday? So we got time to live. That's All right. true. There are parts of BC where there's no data. It's like living in the Stone Age. All right, so 2.5 uh, has been rolling out across a bunch of platforms, but not the Mac App Store just yet. Um, That's the after plan, we're yeah. Done. So basically, uh, Mac App Store is going to get all the updates as soon as we're finished. Um, same with all the platforms, basically. If the games are available on a platform, we're going to be updating them now that the 2.5 series is mm -hmm. done. And then back to Planescape, because we have 3.14 that's on Steam only. Right. So there's uh, actually some language updates for Planescape that we're going to be pushing out in the near future. Ooh. Um, and actually, uh, we're in the middle of looking. So we, we've, in, in the process of the 2.5 series, we found some issues with shaders and whatnot. So we're probably going to be doing a little bit of a performance pass, and you might see some of that performance stuff in the Planescape tournament patch. Okay, cool. News to me. I'm learning things. All right. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's boring tech details, blah, you know, whatever. These people don't care. They're just like, hey, just when, when can I stab him? When? That's really all I want to know. Oh, that's brutal, man. All right, I'll so stab her with a healing sword. I'll ask you another question here. All right, so Neverwinter Nights question: Are there any plans for Beamdog to follow the format of the Neverwinter Nights vault, supplying module designers with an ERF, a test module, and a README? Um, I would like to provide the community with a few new tools once we've built them, um, and I think that they would go along those lines. Um, in terms of specifics, I don't really have anything to say right now. But when we produce some new content, yeah, I'd like to have some uh, sample things to throw in there. Um, speaking of that, actually, mm -hmm. do you want to get into the, uh, the Steam Workshop content? Yeah, actually, we can talk about that, and then we'll get back to some player questions here. So in, on Steam Workshop on Neverwinter Nights, you're going to be seeing a couple of new updates there. Uh, we have weapon packs for uh, Kukuri and Rapiers. Uh, you'll also notice that we are re-uploading some of the older content uh, under a new title. Uh, so there will be Enhanced Arabeth or Enhanced Kukuri, Enhanced uh, Rapier. And it'll all be coming from the Beamdog account as opposed to various developer accounts that we have within the company. Just to keep things a little bit more organized and, um, well, hashtag branding, right? Uh, also, we've released a, a 
an update for the Arabeth example model. Right. And uh, we've heard from a number of players that uh, when somebody has an updated um, like sword and shield pack on the Arabeth model, it, uh, it runs into some issues, so they conflict a little oh, bit. Probably. So, so there was some uh, problems with the shaders on yeah. the Arabeth model, and that's been fixed with the new update. So if you are already subscribed, uh, you should have that fix and should be good to go on that front. Yeah, there's a reason that we're not including these as part of the default package right now, and that's because we're figuring out all of our pipelines and shader stuff, so we don't want to uh, put them on by default. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very exciting, though. Yeah. Lots of little drops of fun little content packs. Um, in addition to that, so we've gotten a bunch of questions from people about, like, hey, if I didn't buy the game on uh, Steam, if I bought it on Beamdog, or if I were to buy it on GOG, because we're coming to GOG in the near future, um, how do I get these amazing things that you guys are releasing? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab the stuff that we currently have in the workshop and we're going to throw it on the uh, Beamdog website or we might throw it in the Neverwinter Vault or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, just as sort of a stopgap for you guys to be able to access it because, again, if you're not on Steam, you don't have access to the workshop. Yeah, why not both? Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Speaking of uh, user-generated content, just very briefly here, uh, we touched on it last week, but the uh, and I think the week before, but the NW Sync stuff that's coming. Right. Um, I just wanted to remind people about how exciting and cool this feature is. Um, this is a pro or project that we've been cooking on for a little while. Right. NW Sync is essentially. Um, it's like when you play Gary's Mod or something and you connect to a server and it's mm -hmm. like, hey, I need to grab that, that, and that, and then it does it rather than sending you to garysmod.co.uk slash wares slash virus dot jp. Um, That's my favorite site. Well, you know, get, I a new, get a new favorite site, buddy. <laughs> um, so yeah, you'll be able to connect to a server, persistent world or otherwise, and it will automatically determine, oh, you need these files from these hack packs. We're going to pull these down and automatically set everything up. And then it just connects you rather than kicking you out of the game so that you have to go well somewhere else to pick up the data. Um, I think that this is going to be the biggest feature that has been added to Neverwinter Nights since mm -hmm. its initial release because this could, my hope is at least, um, drive an all new like renaissance in the world of Neverwinter Nights multiplayer because... Yeah. If the barrier of entry is uh, download game, launch game, connect to some wild galaxy of servers out there, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I think that's a really exciting thing. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. And just convenience. I and, love it. And it actually, it's it's also a big feature for when we go to Android. Shall we chat about that a little bit? Well, maybe we should answer a question okay. or give away that t-shirt. Let's that give dance. away some stuff because it's like halfway through the stream and I'm trying to play Civ. I'm trying mm -hmm. to crack some jokes. It's too much. It's yeah. too much. All right. So first t-shirt of the day goes to Og Proof. OG Proof. OG Original proof. Gangster Proof. Nice. Nice. All right. Nice. That t-shirt is yours, Og sir proof. or madame or whatever you choose to identify as. All right, so Phil, question. Uh, I've enjoyed the Jarig's family quest in Neverwinter Nights pretty much, uh, as well as the location of Charwood itself. Do you have any plans on adding atmospheric quests like that as a part to your further creations? Do I know what rhetorical means? Um, atmospheric, yes, I would say. All right. Um, there will we're, be we're, air. We're cooking on some cool stuff. Actually, um, Niv did some crazy uh, <laughs> fog effects. If you go on the Neverwinter Vault and search for uh, his, his stuff, he did these really awesome atmospheric fog effects. So it kind of looks like volumetric fog, and it's really, really, really cool. And it's driven mm -hmm. through scripting. Um, we were chatting a bit about uh, weather effects in one of the previous streams, and then afterwards he pulled me, and he's like, hey, check this out. Mm -hmm. um, it looks really cool and moody, so um, I definitely want to do something with that in the future. Very cool. All right, so another question. Uh, is there a chance to get Dragon Age version in Neverwinter Nights? Is there a chance to get Dragon Age version in Neverwinter Nights? Let's parse this. Let's diagram this sentence. <laughs> Somebody give me a pen. There you go. There you go. All right. Oh, you deleted it. Let's... Oh, sorry. Is there a chance? I'm, I'm, I'm having a bad day. Okay. Is there a chance... Okay, that's part one. Is there a chance to get Dragon Age? I, I think you're just mocking them at this age point. I'm, I'm so, I am. <laughs> um, I think what this question is asking is could we get. Like Dragon Age Dragon content, Age content or stories, in 
probably not. Yeah, um, so Dragon Age is an entirely different intellectual property. It's an original IP built by Bioware, mm -hmm. um, specifically because they wanted to keep making fantasy games, but they didn't want to have to pay for the Wizards of the Coast license. Um, this question's probably coming from uh, that Dragon oh, Age was originally okay. I created. Understand in, now. Okay, that was a very like. I apologize basic. for interpreting your question in a stupid way and also being a jerk. Um, so one of the things Trent mentioned on the previous stream is that all of Dragon Age was prototyped inside of Neverwinter Nights before it was ever uh, built in their new engine because they didn't have the new engine ready to go at the time. Um, I severely doubt that Bioware would want to release that, but uh, they would be the people to ask about it. Mm -hmm. um, it would be very cool, um, just yeah. from a purely academic standpoint, to see how Bioware uh, built that game. I mean, it's been a decade now. Mm -hmm. Good lord, has yeah. it really been a decade since so, Dragon uh, Age So, Bioware, would you like to do a premium module of Dragon Age? <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of uh, premium modules, for the... Uh, new premium modules you are soliciting, could they be for existing settings like the Forgotten Realms or Ravenloft, yeah, or me, you'd like to have more generic settings? Let me build on that a little bit. So um, when I say I'm soliciting for premium modules, basically that means that if people or groups come and pitch to us, we are listening and we are actively interested in. Now I'm not looking for some random person out there to be like, I'm going to build a 20 hour module, that sort of thing, because this is like an officially branded thing that we would have to work with them on. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for people who can deliver high, uh, high quality modules here. Now to address your specific question about um, what setting it needs to be in, any content that we produce for Neverwinter Nights needs to be set in third edition and it needs to be set in a third edition timeline. So right. that means that's uh, pre-spell plague and all that stuff. Yeah, and no Eberron. And no Eberron, yeah. Um, and as well, um, you would want to keep it within D&D. &D. You wouldn't want to go in some generic uh, setting or something like that. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be a premium module, it should exploit the, the very rich history of the realms or Planescape or, or uh, Dark Sun or something like that. Spelljammer? Uh, Spelljammer is totally on board. Um, it's a little hard to pull off in the context of Neverwinter Nights. I heard that was Trent's favorite setting. It is Trent's favorite setting, and when we're off camera, he talks at length about how much he wants to make a Spelljammer game and how hard it is to keep denying his love for Spelljammer. Um, it's, it's, frankly, it's quite embarrassing. We I mean, both he, deserve he one of those. Um, there we go. Get <laughs> little, uh, little, little right. badge of honor. So here's another question for you. Um, all right, so question at Beamdog. Would it be possible to recover the licenses of Eye of the Beholder series and launch an enhanced version with graphics like the Legend of Grimlock? Um, recover isn't the wrong word. It's not as if they're lost. They're just uh, being used by someone else right now. Mm -hmm. All right, and so we have another question there that's bringing us to the next point in my very important gen agenda. Actually, it's not quite the next point. Uh, we do have a dev build of Neverwinter Nights coming out next week, according to Niv, uh, or at least fingers crossed, hoping for it. And that dev build will include some of the new free portraits. Uh, these were community portraits from the Road to 2.0 contest that we did uh, oh, yeah. a couple Eight of years ago. years ago. So those are coming to Neverwinter Nights as just a free little gimme for all you Neverwinter Nights fans. All right, but that brings us to the Minsk line. So... Phil, you were telling me about this line a while back, and then we tracked it down, and it was never, ever released or put into the game. And you told me that Watsy would never let me put this on I, the screen. I, and I was wrong, because I thought, you know, they, they would understand the, the foul language <laughs> involved. All right, so folks, get ready for this. This is an exclusive. Well, let's, let's set it up here. So oh, okay. um, it was the summer of 2015. Um, this was for Dragon Spear. I was down in LA and we were doing the voiceover recordings for all the new character stuff. So that meant that we had to track down all the old voice actors for BG. So mm -hmm. like Jim Maskeman, um, uh, Jennifer Hale, uh, Jim Cummings. Mm -hmm. Jim Cummings is the voice of Minsk and a whole bunch of other people actually. He's Pete from Goof Troop mm -hmm. and uh, Winnie the Pooh and uh, Tigger. Yeah, he's, he's, he's about half of uh, the animated voices that you've heard in your lifetime. And he's a... Uh, he is like the voice actor of, uh, of, of, of Hollywood. Anyways, so he's Minsk, and he's fantastic. And we were recording lines for Minsk, and it was amazing. And he, he, he remembered Minsk and was back into him after like five minutes and was like, ah, my friends. Um, it was a fantastic time. So in the process of getting all this VO done, we also had to record lines for the trailer for the game to, right. sh to showcase it. And um, so when you do that, you, you write up, you know, a script and you write up, you know, a billion trillion variants for lines, things that you might use, things that you might have a value for. 
Um, so we ended up uh, recording a whole ton of lines that we could use in a trailer, mm -hmm. and we discarded like 95% of them. Now, because I was not supervised and was allowed to write things that, you know, no, no one could stop me from writing. I was like, let's make Jim Cummings say, say. funny things in the voice of Minsk. So one of the lines that we, uh, we had pitched for uh, the trailer is one of the lines that we're about to play. So this is Minsk. Well, no, it's Jim Cummings as Minsk. It's not actually Minsk saying these so things. He completely would never say unofficial. Um, but yeah, let's, let's play it. It's not as, I feel like I'm setting it up to be more than it is. All right. You will lead us, my friend. And together, we will shatter the backside of quiet. evil and spread its cracks we can't asunder! <laughs> Is it done? All right, so that was, uh, that was Jim Cummings shattering the backside of evil and spreading the cracks asunder. And you can see how that would not go well in a trailer. Um, you can see how that might, um, might get us in trouble. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I would like to thank you for bringing that into the world, Phil. Yeah. So this is all. I Phil. If, had I known that Wizards was going to be a lot cooler about it, I probably would have <laughs> uh, pitched it for the trailer. But I mean, that that would have gotten us in trouble. <laughs> cool. Um, question from the audience: What about new voice sets? Ooh, we have some uh, exciting news on that front, but we can't reveal it just yet. That's right. Uh, we're probably going to be talking about it at PAX when we go to visit. That's my plan. Yeah. And uh, speaking of PAX, so we still have a panel going on at PAX. We're going to be changing up some of our announcements. You'll hear more of that in the near future. Um, but just back-end scheduling, business stuff, things change. Um, we wanted to get this change in before they uh, printed all the, uh, the program guides. Yep. But unfortunately, we got approvals and uh, whatnot at the last second. So... The uh, program guide for PAX is going to say one thing, and then the actual panel is going to be slightly different. Um, right. But there will be a lot of overlap with what the uh, panel program guide says. Still going to be a fun time. We're still going to run some contests, and uh, we'll still be streamed on Beamdog, on PAX 2. Mm -hmm. Yes, so there's the next question already answered. We're that good. Yes, we will be streaming. Uh, it will be on Beamdog. It will probably be on the D&D channel, and uh, it will be on PAX mm -hmm. 2. Yeah. And, of course, as always, the first five people uh, will be bench-pressed by Trent. Um, we'll have the bench set up in the corner. And, uh, no, that one's actually true. Uh, okay. Um, uh, I would, I would I, ask that... I, I'm holding you to that. No, yeah. no, no duos, uh, no, no couples. It's one person at a time. Um, he is a strong man, a strong man, if you will. Um, but one person at a time, please. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, show up there. The room's going to have 600 seats. I want a butt in every single one of them. And if you can't make it to PAX, um, be sure to tune in online. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah. Hey, uh, speaking of those uh, new items that we were going to throw. Yeah. On, let's uh, uh, let's kick it back Big over Dog. to the the screen here, and we can take a look at Neverwinter Nights and the work that uh, Boyd's been doing. Yeah, so Boyd has been uh, doing up a bunch of new weapons and whatnot to mm -hmm. replace the existing sets. And this is the stuff that we're going to be throwing on our website and on the Steam Workshop. So this week, we've got some rapiers. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see them because there's a man's head in the way. But uh, yeah, there's a lot more detail to them. They look really, really cool. Yep. Um, so what Boyd was doing was he would look at the original uh, artwork for these things. You can see it here. Um, and the art for each individual Neverwinter item... Um, it was very unique. It had a very different style to the BG stuff and to other RPGs in general. Like everything was very chromed out mm -hmm. and like very shiny, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, so he looked at the original designs for the 2D images for these swords and he kind of used that as the basis when he was rebuilding these uh, rapiers with much, much nicer textures mm -hmm. like they've got normal and spec and all that fun stuff. Yep. Um, so those are all in. As well, uh, in addition to the rapiers, you can see that we've got these kukris. Mm -hmm. These are also brand new and will be available today. And they're uh, the latest example of stuff that's going in. So we were looking at the list of uh, remaining weapons and whatnot that we'll have to be building. And good Lord, is there a lot of them. Um, an interesting thing about Neverwinter Nights was that when they were building it, they were like, okay, this is going to be like the RPG adventure box. You got to have a million things in it. 
And the, the plan for how much content they were going to build wasn't, you know, this will be a new RPG, so we'll build a small amount of content. It was, no, let's build a similar amount of content to Baldur's Gate 2, which is a massive, sprawling epic that is built off of mm -hmm. the backs of, you know, five years of efforts. So, uh, yeah. So I, I spotted a question in chat. Uh, are these textures already in game or are they in Steam Workshop? These are Steam Workshop yeah, only for now. Right now. All you have to do is uh, subscribe and it'll pop on as something you can access. Yeah. Um, so the other question that's popped up is, is the plan to update all textures in the game? I will not commit to anything in lieu of Trent being here, but uh, there are discussions and work efforts happening around that issue right this second. Mm -hmm. And following up on that, will you soft code the feature or feats like weapon focus? Yeah, so actually on that topic, I had a chat with Niv a couple weeks ago about what we'd like to do um, after we get the GOG version out the door and after we get NW Sync uh, out there. So the two big things that we have coming down the pipe are uh, um, NW Sync and 64-bit support. Mm -hmm. And those two things are huge game changers. 64-bit uh, especially is going to take a while to settle down because while it's there, it's done, uh, it's real buggy, and we're finding all sorts of fun differences between Windows, Mac, and Linux and how they handle pointers and all that stuff. So those are the two big things we need to worry about. After that, what I'd like to do, um, historically with Neverwinter Enhanced Edition, we've been picking out like very developer and modder-focused features. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to pick out like some things like soft coding, a particular type of uh, uh, class or, or, or feed or that sort of thing. And every time we do a stable release, I'd like to push a few more of those uh, pretty straightforward features that people yeah. are asking for out. So I'd like to just get a lot more stuff that you guys are asking for now that we've done the heavy lifting of getting all the back end cleaned up. Right. Um, so to that point uh, specifically, yeah, I think that's the kind of thing that we would target in the near future. All right. So more questions here have just sprung up, most of them from one person. Thank you. Uh, will you be including CEP weapons in uh, these texture updates? Uh, no. So the CEP issue, I deeply respect it, and I think it's great, and I think it's going to have a fantastic life with uh, Infinity Engine. The right situation around it is too complex for us to really... Uh, adopt it entirely. Mm -hmm. And the issue is that we've already kind of cut out uh, enough work just upgrading the existing content. Right. Um, adding on the CEP would, would break the bank, basically. We should leave a little bit of work for modders well, to yeah, do, I right? Mean, we, you, you guys got to have yeah, something yeah. to do. All right, so will you be changing any or adding any new constants for the base weapon types? That's the kind of thing that we're looking at. Right. So like, if, if this is a thing that, you know, a week or two weeks of our time, we can knock that out for the next patch, yeah, we'll look at that. Mm -hmm. And going back to that NSYNC, NWSYNC, uh, yeah. uh, will persistent worlds need to incorporate whatever packages they need into hacks, or do they provide overrides. So the, the beauty of the uh, NW sync system, now there's a little bit of work for, for server runners to mm -hmm. do. You're, you will have to set up, uh, you have to configure your server to be able to point at these things, mm -hmm. uh, but you shouldn't have to change your content. This is just a change of the server configuration where files are. The content of hack packs shouldn't change. And the really, really, really cool thing about NW sync is that it will um, look inside of hack packs and say like, okay, I only need this subset. I only need this subset. And then, uh, so if you don't need the entire hack pack, it doesn't pull down the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And we should probably provide documentation for that. We, we're going to, when, when NWSync goes out, there's going to be a, a whole push to explain and get it set up for different server runners. Because um, it's, it's a huge feature and we absolutely need to have documentation for mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah, so it, you're going to see, it's going to be like a typical Neverwinter server feature where uh, there's support and documentation for it. All right. And uh, going back to the voice acting, we've got a question about that. Did any of the voice actors from the BG saga that you'd talked to express fond memories or such when they came to reprise their roles? Jim Cummings remembered Manskin. He had a really good time with him. Um, and he was the one that actually that brought up Boo because mm -hmm. um, he's like, oh, he's the guy that has the little uh, talking hamster in his shoulder. That was incorrect, of course, but, you know, whatever. It's been 12 years for the guy. Give the guy a break. Um, most of the other actors, it took them a while to remember the characters because it had been, like, you know, a decade and a half. Um, but Jim Meskimen, he remembered uh, Edwin and Khalid. He had a great time with Khalid. Um, now that I remembered it, there's another line with Khalid that I'll have to dig out for you. This one we can't show on screen <laughs> because it actually has cussing in it. Oh. But... Uh, 
Yeah, it was Khalid, and I think he says like, "Mind your own effing business." <laughs> um, That's a challenge. Yeah, yeah, I can get that through Watsi, I think. Yeah, um, <laughs> Jennifer Hale, of course, she remembered her character as Donna here, and um, uh, she's uh, Donna here and Viconia. Yeah, uh, Viconia especially, she remembered. Um, she, oh man, Jennifer Hale can knock out fantasy words like mm-hmm. nobody's business. So we were, we were cruel to jennifer and we had like word after word in drow like entire sentences where she's talking to bailoth and they're just like shit talking the rest of the part i'm sorry for cussing so much on the D D screen <laughs> and they're 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 chatting back and forth in drow and they're um it's just a long string of like unpronounceable words and in the booth first try she's like D- nailed it nailed it nailed it nailed it nailed it, nailed it. And I'm just like, do you speak Drow? Is, did you just remember it? And hey, she's it, like, no, I'm just a pro. It's like, probably true. best that we don't know if she speaks Drow. Well, she did call me an Iblith as I was leaving. Well, it's accurate. Um, Jason Marsden um, wasn't actually part of our crew because this was BG1, but he was there, actually. I met two celebrities that I was quite excited about. I met Jason Marsden, who was the voice of CERNED in mm-hmm. BG2, and he remembered that. He actually approached me, he was waiting in the uh, the lobby area, and we were chatting for a little bit, and he's like, hey, Baldur's Gate, I remember that, I was a druid, oh yeah, yeah, CERNED. And he started chatting a little bit about that, and he <laughs> wanted to get in on, on the, the VO, and I'm like, man, come on, I want you in here, but that's a BG2 character. <laughs> Um, so there was Jason Marsden. <coughs> Clearly, you should have put CERN in. I, I should have put CERN in. That was an opportunity. It was missed, an opportunity sir. that I wasted. I wasted an even bigger opportunity. Sorry, Jason. It was a bigger opportunity for me. His uh, LeVar Burton was there. Jordy LaForge from Star Trek. Now, or, I think. It, it, more importantly, Reading Rainbow. And Reading Rainbow. And actually, that's when they were launching the Reading Rainbow uh, library app that they uh, put on iOS and Android, mm-hmm. which I suggest you go check out because it's got a bunch of free children's books. Uh, but he was there with Jason, and they were recording VO for um, Transformers, mm. uh, not one of the movies, one of the recent TV shows. Thank God. And I, I sat around after our session just to watch theirs, and it was a lot of fun. But, like, at one point, and I think I'm a pretty cool customer around celebrities. I typically don't gush. But I did the the hyper nerd thing where I, like, wanted to meet him and shake his hand. And he's like, so why did you want to talk to me? And I was just like, I just wanted to meet you because I'm a big fan. And we're like, well... <laughs> Big gulp, say. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it was very, very awkward. And to this day, I wake up in a cold sweat when I remember it. But, LeVar, if you're watching, thank you for <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so it was a lot uh, of fun. So there's some VO out there, some of, w- of which I, uh, I didn't realize we could release, but more that I know we cannot <laughs> um, due to the amount of cussing and language. Challenge accepted, sir. Yeah, yeah. All right. So more questions here. Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition Steam Achievements, when? Um, yeah. So I have a plan for how I'd like to approach that, but uh, it's probably not for a little while yet. Um, my, my plan involves a lot of the stuff that you guys would like to see for the original campaigns for like achievements and stuff like that. Um, but I can't really talk about it too much right now and it's going to be a little ways off. Okay. Speaking of Neverwinter, here's a question from me. How about that true type front font? How are we doing on that? Oh, it's done. Oh. Um, we actually, so in the, the develop, well, not the development branch that you guys are going to get right away, but in our uh, internal dev branch, we have uh, arbitrary UI scaling and TTF support. Um, so you can change the font. You've uh, and in my dev version that I have set up for me, um, I have an all new larger font. We're testing that on an Android. Uh, in the end, you'll probably be able to change out the TTF um, with whatever you want. There's currently a bug with it that I gotta write up a ticket for today. Where um, so you can scale the UI arbitrarily, and the text will scale with it. But the text renders at its original 1x um, resolution. Mm-hmm. So when it gets scaled up, you get all sorts of uh, texture artifacts on it. So what we need to do is set it up so that the text renders at the scaling setting rather than 1x and then multiplied. Mm. Um, and that'll take a little bit of doing. But the feature's there, it's coming, and it's looking really, really good. All right. So uh, here's another Neverwinter Nights question. Uh, is there a complete feature list anywhere? An implementation implementation checklist for the ambitious and hopeful Neverwinter Nights server operator? Yeah, Lee, is there? I don't know. Where is it? Trello, maybe? I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, okay, so we can look into that. Uh, I, there, there is documentation. It's just kind of scattered around. Yeah. So maybe we'll uh, work on yeah. collecting that. Uh, Julius, I'm sure you're watching. Please remind me. 
because I have a brain like a rusty bucket. Uh, going back to PAX, are we going to have any sort of mascot there? This is going to be hurtful. All right. <laughs> All right. I would like to dress up Phil uh, as Minsk, but that's probably not going to happen. So we'll... we'll Ooh, it could be a level drain Minsk where he's fought a vampire and he's all gaunt and thin. Uh, we will attempt to bring the Minsk armor along, and I'm sure we will not be able to pry Trent out of it. So we'll see what we can do. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to find a makeup artist to do that bald cap for him again. We can do or it. We, I think we should just shave his damn head. Because we spent, for real, two hours every morning getting that bald cap on. Mm -hmm. And it would have been, it saved a lot of time if we were just like, here's a, a clipper and a bick. Go nuts. Yeah. And uh, on previous live streams, Trent's talked about how at the end of the day, he had all that sweat sloshing around within his Dude. makeup skull cap. 100% true. I saw it. Like, he'd poke a hole in it, and it would just be like, psh, 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 psh. it was gross. So My gross. suggestion was <laughs> to create a channel in the back to drain out the uh, assorted goo. But I was shouted down when uh, he realized that I was coming at him with a pair of scissors. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure people at PAX would love to see you in the Rasad outfit. I'm sure they would. Any, I'm sure they would love interest? a lot of things that aren't going to happen. You, d you don't want to do that again? I do not feel as if the public needs to see my chest, and I feel like I don't want to shave it again. Uh, Everything grew back, guys. Sorry. <laughs> it's like a weed all down there. It just keeps coming back. Hair. The more you know. What's it good for? All right. And uh, somebody suggested that you play You go as Boo. I could do so that. So we get one of those little, like, animal onesies or something. I could do that. Yeah. You could run around. Hey, I found a bug. Found it. What? Okay. It's, uh, oh, I can't recreate it now. Oh, there we go. So there's an issue with one of the tries, mm -hmm. and it's projecting a uh, super long uh, shadow over there. Well, ship this it. is game dev, guys. Look at this. Finding bugs live. All right. This is this is how you do it. All right. Well, I'll uh, we'll send that over to Sonia after this and uh, make her write <laughs> up a ticket for me. All right. Uh, so what do you want to talk about next? Do you want to talk about should we share anything about 80-20 or oh, should yeah. we talk about the new All right. D&D stuff got, we that's got, coming uh, out? We got 10 minutes coming up. Sure. So uh, real quick, how about you run down the new D&D books that are coming out? All right. So we're all we're huge D&D nerds here at Beamdog, of course. So uh, they've made a lot of announcements recently. Um, the first was Dragon Heist, which they talked about at the Stream Mini Eyes. And we got an early look at the book. And Wow. That is some exciting stuff in there. Uh, any DM who's excited about heists or Waterdeep or really anything Dungeons & Dragons related, they're going to love, love, love Dragon Heist. Following that, we've got uh, Waterdeep Dungeons of the Mag Mad Mage. So that's going to include some crazy stuff right there. Uh, they've just announced a digital uh, copy of a new Eberron source cool. book. So that's pretty cool. I never thought that would ever happen. And the one that I'm super excited about is... Um, the Guildmaster's Guide uh, to Ravnica. Ravnica? Wh Ravnica? Ra I thought it was Ravnica. Well, maybe I misspelled it. Jeez, let's yeah. this guy. Yeah. So uh, that is a Magic the Gathering world. So we're going to see some crossover between um, the gameplay of Dungeons & Dragons and the lore of Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Which is rad. Yeah, they have interesting lore because, like, you only ever get, like, snippets of it here and mm -hmm. there through the cards. But they've been building it up since, like, what, 94 or yeah. so? Yeah, so I, I'm pumped for that. Yeah. I love magic. I love D&D. So seeing those two come together at last is so cool. And the one that I'm annoyed about because I wanted to do it is a coloring book. And so they got a Dungeons & Dragons coloring book coming out. So <laughs> it's It's numbers and then the alphabet. They have two books, I think, I thought, yeah. And I'm chapped about the alphabet one because I wanted to do that. Yeah. I wanted to do the children's ABZ, ABCs of D&D uh, &D, where it's like A is for Azamar, B is for Barbazoo. You Why know? not the holder? That's more on brand. Because I'm trying to teach them about the planes. Oh. Well. And not everyone lives in the ma prime material plane. You know, there's Sweet, probably more, more people living and on the outer planes than all of Farron. Like, come on. These people need an education. And for too long, they have been denied the coverage that they deserve. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, yeah, lots of super awesome stuff going on with D&D, &D, uh, especially all the source books that they're printing. And, uh, you know, I'm always excited to hear more about that. Uh, going back to fan questions here. So, yeah, what's going on with NWNX dev? 
Uh, that's ask, a great ask. Ask Niv. That's a good question for Niv. I'm sure he's in the chat there. Um, um, well, there is. Uh, there's some exciting database stuff happening. So we're incorporating SQLite into the uh, the engine, um, so that we have a replacement, or it's not a replacement. It's another database engine that will live alongside the old one for the sake of legacy support. Mm -hmm. But this new SQL engine, um, it's it's incredibly useful for both saves and for per persistent worlds. Um, and it's going to open up a lot of opportunities for NWNX. And speaking of NWNX, we have a question about uh, people can't change character names. Is there a plan to open up the set name function to work on player characters? So this is an example of the sort of thing that um, I'm working with Niv to like cherry pick low hanging fruit like this that's you know seemingly straightforward to expose to the player. And if it is in fact seemingly or straightforward, then we'll 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 do it. Okay, cool. Um, so before we get into eighty twenty, let's give away another T-shirt. Jeez, we're just clothing half of our audience. Yes, here. two. We should start giving away underwear and pants. Or socks. I want to do socks. If you want to see socks, let me know. Do you remember in Wayne's World when he's got like the Pepsi shirt and mm -hmm. the jacket and the hat and he's like, people just want to want to promote products and stuff. We should get like the Beamdog tracksuit with like the, the shirt and the, oh sorry, all my lies are falling off. All right. With like the shirt and the hat and the shoes and like... 80s out the tracksuit and all that stuff and it'll be like beam dog with the b and then like a picture of me on the front all right pretty, pretty sick i think we could uh corn corner the russian market and uh <laughs> they have to be tearaways well because you got to escape from the cops yeah <laughs> all right so uh enough of that let's uh let's talk about 8020 let's talk about it well before i do that there's a question about the pronunciation of farin is it pronounced Farron, Faroon, Farunia? I've heard it about 18 different ways, and every time I pronounce it, it changes. So I think it's Farron. I'm the pretty one, sure it's Farron. The one that I was always surprised by was uh, in Planescape, you've got the, the main city there. Oh, yeah, uh, Sigil versus Sigil. Yeah, Sigil or Sigil. Uh, last Turns I out heard it's uh, Sigil. Sigil, yeah. Weird. Anyways, 80-20 as we uh, wrap up our stream for today. Yeah. Um, so at Beamdog, we run an 80-20 program, which means that 80% of your time is spent working on things that pay the bills, and 20% of your time is working on fun projects that interest you as they relate to the company in some capacity. Um, so that could be, for example, adding jumping to Neverwinter Nights. We didn't do that, but that's an example of something that you could do. Mm -hmm. um, so today, uh, we've wrapped up one of our first 80-20 uh, um, sprints, I guess. What do yeah. you call one of these? 80-20 uh, stretch? And so we've got like uh, five or six fun little projects that people got together to do. Some of them are D and D related. Some of them are Beamdog related, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing them. And uh, yeah, later this afternoon we're gonna have a little show and tell meeting where we show off the cool stuff. Yeah. There's um. So the team that made uh, Sword Coast High, which I'm sure you folks remember, the uh, classic D and D dating game. Mm -hmm. Um, they uh, took the technology that they had built that uh, game on, and they took it to make something pretty interesting, and we'll see uh, see if we can't reveal it one day. Yeah. But uh, yeah, all the teams have made really badass th things, and uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to this afternoon. Yeah, there's uh, there's some really cool things in there, like uh, pitches for Neverwinter modules. Yeah. Uh, just straight up technology. I've been working on a thing that I hope that we can eventually show off at some point. Maybe there's a uh, there's a Soviet propaganda poster in our kitchen for uh, one of the teams looking for volunteers to help them rebuild parts of the Neverwinter Nights uh, lighting engine. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty fun. Cool. Uh, apparently we did not announce the uh, <laughs> Neverwinter Nights. Or not. It's because nobody won. Yeah. We, we picked random and it said no one. And uh, it was like, whoa, that's, no, no, I've no, never no. seen hey, that before. You deserve another one of those, sir. I'm going right, to turn so. these into pauldrons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the winner of today's uh, other Neverwinter Nights t-shirt is Meg Punia. Meg Punia? Meg Pugnia? Mapugina. Mm. Mapugina. Yeah. So t-shirt for you. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and next week, pants. I've got a bunch of spare, like, pairs of pants that don't fit me anymore. I, I'm I, running I, out of lies. I legitimately could bring in pants and bring, so it's not technically a lie yet. It's All only right. a lie if I don't bring the pants in and then give them away on stream. Right. Are you going to embroider them with the Beamdog B? Oh, I've embroidered the uh, the seat many times. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I pity the winner who gets that. I, I feel bad. I know that Trent is watching this and he's just boiling with rage because he's not here to keep me reined in. 
Sorry, buddy. All right. And uh, I have failed you, Trent. I failed you. What you going to do? All right. All right, folks, uh, this was our Friday stream. We're uh, here every Friday, in fact, and we're talking about Neverwinter Nights, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Planescape Tournament, Sea mm -hmm. of Dragon Spear, all the game. Look, these lies coming off. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, we do this every Friday. We give away some shirts. We talk about our upcoming patch plans, our development stuff that's going on. Um, this week, there's no update to Neverwinter Nights. That's coming soon, and yeah. we're coming out to GOG in the very near future. Yeah, 2.5, uh, um, we've got the updates coming out soon. Soon. Soon, uh, Neverwinter Tonight's Enhanced Edition is on sale on Steam. Follow us on all our social platforms. Sign up for our newsletter. We're going to have some cool contests going out. Uh, stay tuned for PAX news. Um, stats. Pay attention to us. It's all we want. Just look at our stuff and <laughs> buy our things. That's, that's the easiest way I can put it. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>